Hi everybody, I'm back for my vlog and today I'm going to talk to you about hyperthyroidism or an overactive thyroid. As you know I've recently spoken about hypothyroidism, an underactive thyroid and much of the detail about the thyroid, what it is, where it is, what it does is in that video. So I'll give you a very short synopsis in this one so as not to bore you. The thyroid gland is a gland at the front of the neck here and it's crucial to just about everything in the body. It produces two hormones, T4, which is called thyroxine, and T3, triiodothyronine. Both of those hormones are crucial in our body, and T3 is the more active one. So what it does is control the rate at which just about everything that happens in your body goes on it. So how fast your heart beats, your brain works, your hair grows, your gut functions, your skin turns over how hot you are, your metabolism. So it, it is the engine, the control centre of your body, if you like. So when the thyroid goes wrong, whether it's hypo or hyper, it's crucial and devastating for the people that are affected. It's a disease of women, so one in 50 women are affected with thyroid problems, and one in a thousand men. So what's the cause of an overactive thyroid? Well, Lots of things can make the thyroid go wrong. The most common cause is a disease called Graves' disease. And that's an autoimmune condition where antibodies in your body, in your own immune system, start attacking the thyroid and stimulate it to make more hormone. So essentially you produce too much hormone in Graves' disease. About three quarters of all hyperactivity of the thyroid is caused by Graves' disease. And it's kind of the opposite to Hashimoto's, which is also an autoimmune thyroid condition which causes hypothyroidism. Then outside of that you can have what we call a toxic nodular goiter and this is where your thyroid gets swollen with lots and lots of small nodules and they can all stimulate the thyroid and make it produce too much hormone. When people have that kind of um, goiter you can generally see it at the front of their neck. You can have a solitary toxic adenoma, so that's a lump that's not a cancer, but it's a single lump in the thyroid which is causing the thyroid to overwork. You can have thyroiditis, which essentially means inflammation of the thyroid, and lots of different things can cause that, but in so doing, they cause the thyroid to produce too much hormone. Some thyroid cancers can actually cause the thyroid to produce too much hormone. Sometimes too much iodine can affect, or too little, can affect the thyroid. So this is really, really rare. The thyroid uses iodine to make its thyroid hormones. And so if you have too much of it in your diet, essentially it could cause your thyroid to produce too much. But as I said, it's really rare. Some medications that we use for heart problems um, or mental health conditions, like amiodarone, lithium, can actually stimulate the thyroid to produce too much or can actually cause it to make too little. So certainly some drugs are important and their effect that they have on the thyroid and we have to watch that really carefully if we prescribe those drugs. And then finally the, the pregnancy hormone HCG can also stimulate the thyroid and that's why some pregnant women get a thyroiditis or get an overactive thyroid whilst they're pregnant. But we can also see HCG being produced by some cancers. So sometimes for example when a man has got a testicular cancer, that can produce HCG and in turn that can stimulate the thyroid to produce too much hormone. So those are the conditions that cause an overactive thyroid. Now I mentioned it was really important, so what are the symptoms that you get when you have an overactive thyroid? Well in stimulating all of those parts around the body including the heart, you can get palpitations and that's the heart beating really, really fast, and sometimes it can beat irregularly as well. And that's dangerous from lots of perspectives, from the heart getting worn out and tired, from the risk of stroke when it's irregular. You can get insomnia, sweating, you can get weight loss and still have an increased appetite and be eating lots. And this is where I get really cross because I don't have a thyroid, so I have to take artificial thyroid and when people say to me oh that's fabulous it must be really easy for you to stay so skinny 
It's so maddening because when I go through the list now of the things that happen when you've got too much thyroid, it's a horrible place to be. So alongside those, we can have a heat intolerance, so everybody else is cold and you're boiling and sweating, diarrhea and loose bowels to the point where you're running to the toilet all of the time, thirst and going to urinate excessively as a result, a muscle weakness, joint pain, mood swings and ag aggression and anxiety. You can have a neck swelling that's pushing on your um, esophagus or your swallowing pipe so that eating food, drinking and swallowing can actually feel difficult, as can breathing. Tiredness, loss of sex drive or libido, irritability, all of these things can be caused when your thyroid hormone is just going crazy and you are hyperthyroid. So believe me, I've been there, it's a horrible place to be and nobody wants to be hyperthyroid. There also can be some complications from being hyperthyroid. So for example, in Graves' disease, you can get thyroid eye disease. And this is when the eyes actually push out from the head. So if you looked at somebody from the side, you would see a bulge in their eye that you wouldn't see normally. The eyelids get pulled back over the ball of the eye, so you can see white around the iris that you shouldn't be able to see along the top and the bottom in a normal person. They can get irritation and dryness and be very uncomfortable, so that just blinking is painful, and it can actually lead to double vision. Hyperthyroidism in pregnancy can cause preeclampsia, premature birth, and even miscarriage. And then there's something called a thyroid storm, and this is a life-threatening situation, and it's when the thyroid has produced so much hormone that it actually just takes over everything in the body, causes a storm as per the name, and that in itself can actually be life-threatening and dangerous. So there are lots of complications from being in that situation as well. So how do we diagnose it? Well, if somebody came to me as a GP and they were describing some of the symptoms, even just one or two, that you can get with hyperthyroidism, I would do a physical examination. So I would listen to their heart, take their blood pressure, have a feel of their neck, do some tests to look at their eyes, how their eyelids are moving, have a look at their skin on their legs, test their muscles for strength or weakness, and just do a complete physical. From there, we would do some bloods, so we would look at those hormones, T4, T3, and also the thyroid stimulating hormone, which is the hormone that comes from the brain to tell the thyroid to increase its production of the hormones. And quite often we'll see that in somebody who's hyperthyroid, the T4 and the T3 are really high, and the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, can be low or undetectable. But conversely, as with all of these things in medicine, it could also be really high and could be the driving force making the thyroid produce so much hormone. So the blood tests are really useful. If I'm worried about there being a lump, many lumps, a cancer in the thyroid, we would do an ultrasound and that could be accompanied by a fine needle aspiration where the person doing the ultrasound puts a needle into the lump or one of the lumps to see what it is, to see if it's benign or cancerous. We could even do a radioactive iodine scan, an uptake scan, and I'll talk about radioactive iodine later. But essentially those are the tests that you'll possibly have if you are suspected of having an overactive thyroid. So what's the treatment? Well, as always in medicine, it's medication, surgery or radioactive iodine. There's not really an option with an overactive thyroid of doing nothing because it's dangerous. So starting with medication, the initial aim, if you're hyperthyroid, is to actually calm down the symptoms so that we take the strain off your heart and make you feel a little bit better, and then to control the amount of thyroid hormone that the thyroid gland is producing. So we do that in two ways. So we calm down the heart with a blood pressure tablet called a beta blocker and it slows the heart rate, it reduces blood pressure and hopefully helps control the palpitations. And you can get on top of those things quite easily and quite quickly. So the first medication that your GP will go to or your endocrinologist will be a beta blocker, usually one called propanolol. After that we then have medications called thionamides and these actually 
block the thyroid gland from producing hormone. So they quite quickly take down the amount of hormone that your thyroid gland is producing to hopefully get it to a normal place, to the amount of thyroid hormone that your body actually needs rather than too much. These are called propyl thyrosyl or carbamazole, and we use those in combination with the beta blocker. Now, there are two ways that these are used. One way is to just completely block the thyroid so it's not producing any thyroid hormone at all, and then we give you thyroid hormone to the right amount for your body. That's called block and replace. Or the other way is, is to calculate how much we need to give you to try and bring down the amount of hormone that the thyroid is producing to the correct amount. And that can take some tweaking, but that also works very well. For some people, where we're just controlling the amount of thyroid that they're, they're working on, if we get it right, they can stay on that dose for as long as they need to, and that can actually be long term. For the patients that we use block and replace, after six months to a year, we may consider withdrawing the drugs and seeing if the thyroid has gone back to normal. And in some cases it will do that, but in others it will become hyperactive again. And so then we have to decide what treatment we can use for the long term. There are side effects to these medications, as with all medications, and these are nausea, headache, a rash, joint pains, and quite a dangerous situation called agranulocytosis. And this is an immune suppression situation where getting an infection can actually be really dangerous. So you'll be warned to look out for the signs of that, a sore throat, cold symptoms, a fever, and to seek medical help immediately if you get any of those. It's very rare, but we need to let you know that it could happen so that you're alert for the signs. So that's medication. I mentioned earlier radioactive iodine and using it in an uptake scan. So the thyroid makes thyroid hormones from iodine. So if you deliver a radioactive substance into the body with iodine, it will be the thyroid and some other mucous membranes that actually take it up. And once there, if we're using it as a scan, we can see what the activity is in the thyroid to work out what's going on. But we also use it as a treatment to treat hypothyroidism and some other situations as well. So we deliver the radioactive iodine to the patient in a big enough dose that it's taken up by the thyroid and the aim is to kill thyroid tissue because with enough radiation in it, that's what happens. You drink a capsule, somebody delivers it to you in a spacesuit in a steaming cauldron in a room that's lined with lead so that it doesn't hurt other people. And as I said, it's taken up and absorbed by the thyroid. It can take a few weeks to work and you might need medication until the result's been achieved. In that time, you mustn't get pregnant for six months. And if it's a man, he mustn't father a child for six months. And that's essentially because the ovaries and the sperm making equipment actually take up um, radioactive iodine and can be harmful if you get pregnant using either eggs or sperm that have been affected by the radiation. So you need time to pass to actually shed those cells so there's no more radiation left. You can't use radioactive iodine for pregnant or breastfeeding women or for people that have thyroid eye disease because it can actually make it worse. Now it's not an exact science and if the aim is to actually kill all of your thyroid, you may need more than one dose and you'll have a scan in between to see how much tissue you have left. If the aim is to kill part of your thyroid so that you produce less hormone, you may end up still hyperactive, in which case you'll need another treatment, or you may end up slightly hypothyroid, in which case you'll need to take thyroid medication for life. And that's just a calculation that has to be done and it's one of the risks of having radioactive iodine. Surgery is an option, and we tend to use surgery if you've got a very large goiter with lots of lumps in it that's pressing on your windpipe. If you've got a cancer, we need to remove the cancer before we do other treatment. If you've got severe eye problems, so you can't have surgery, or if you can't have any of the treatments that I've listed before for various reasons. And sometimes people end up having surgery if the other treatments have failed. So there's quite a few reasons why people have surgery and they just take the thyroid out from here. It's a very small scar, as you can see. It used to be a really big scar across here, but now it's tiny. And thereafter, you'll need to take thyroid medication for life because you won't have a thyroid. 
So, as you can see, all of those treatments, whichever one is deemed to be right for you, and that will be decided by your endocrinologist if you're, if you're at the point where you're needing radioactive iodine, thyroid blocking drugs or surgery, all of them can leave you afterwards either hypothyroid, where you have a little bit of your own thyroid gland working but not enough, or completely hypothyroid because you have no thyroid gland left. And at that point, as I mentioned, you'll need to have thyroid medication, um, possibly for the rest of your life, certainly if you don't have thyroid at all. So this is where you could hop over to the hypothyroidism video to understand about that. But I will just touch on how that's done. So if you need thyroid replacement therapy, that's done by tablet and it's a synthetic hormone. Mainly in the UK, it's T4 that you're given. The body breaks T4 down into T3 in normal circumstances. And for a good majority, probably 80% of people, that works absolutely fine. And with your GP, you'll work together to find a dose that works perfectly for you and be returned to normal. There are, however, a proportion of people, a big proportion, who don't make that transition. They don't break down T4, synthetic T4, to T3 very well at all. And they end up feeling awful because they're hypothyroidism and they'll feel equally as awful as when they were hyperthyroid. That's the irony of this treatment. For those people, they find a combination of synthetic T3 and T4 works very well. Unfortunately, in this country, the guidelines don't recommend T3, even though we have lots of lots of case studies of people for whom it works beautifully. I am one of them. And there is an NHS consultation going on at the moment where the government are looking to take T3 off of the prescribing list for GPs and that means people like me will have it withdrawn and I won't be able to function without it. I couldn't function before. I won't be able to be a GP. I won't be able to do normal things in life. I won't be able to go about looking after my family. All of those things that we take for granted. So it's a really, really serious situation. There is a petition and I'm going to put the link to it below as I did with the hypothyroidism. And there is also an NHS consultation which closes on the 21st of October although we're hearing reports that they've already made their decision. But please, fill out the consultation. You can just tick off lyothyronine, which is the T3 hormone, and then you don't have to answer all the other questions. And, you know, give support to those people who really can't function without it. And if that's you, I'm sure you'll feel as strongly as me about it, and I do feel fairly strongly about it. So, those are the treatments that are available at the moment. Um, please do sign that petition, and do the consultation, it doesn't take long, I've done it. And I hope today I've shown you that the thyroid is a crucial gland, it's really important. It's bad if it goes wrong being too high or too low. Um, there are solutions and I've given those over to you. None of them are simple, all have side effects and long-term repercussions, but there are answers and there is medication. And there is medication that everybody at the moment can feel well on, although that could change in the near future. So I hope you've enjoyed it today. Please ask me questions afterwards. I always answer them as you'll see. Please make suggestions for future videos. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks with my next vlog. Thanks for listening.